It's in the paper's interests to cement right-wing politics into the Labour Party framework so that we have continual consensus right-wing politics in this country. Mm. So they have a gigantic incentive to push Keir Starmer to be Prime Minister, regardless of what happens to the Conservative Party, because if there's no alternative to right-wing politics, even outside of the Labour Party, then that means they don't have to worry about political smear games and they don't have to worry about a Corbyn moment mm. happening ever again. Mm. Um, and you're really right again about why it's so scary long-term for the Labour Party to be seen as right-wing. So the analogy I always make, right, is when you look at the 2008 financial crisis, Labour got blamed for this. Now, what's ironic is that Labour should be blamed for the global financial crisis. People say, well, you can't blame them at all. It was global. You have to blame the banks in America. And obviously, mm. they are to blame. But there was mitigation that the Labour government could have taken. They could have had more prudential regulation. There could have been capital controls. There could have been similar regu regulatory frameworks that, like they had in Australia, to try and stop these things. Right, Australia did much better than we did. And it didn't happen. And it didn't happen because Blair was in bed with the financial sector for the entirety of his premiership. He could have reversed the Thatcherite deregulation that led to the global financial crisis in the first place and he did not the labor art should be blamed for the financial crisis but not because they're left wing but because they were right wing and but because mm. it was normally the left wing party that were in charge people are blaming the red team for the failure rather than blaming the dog ideology that they were ascribing to at the time which is a right wing neoliberal one at least on broad economic um consensus around market logic and financial deregulation there were some left wing things that blair did much more so than were getting proposed by the current administration of the labor party but the broad strokes of the economy were this kind of Wilhelm Ropka style a social market economy which is essentially the, the kind of precursor ideology to neoliberalism. Really interesting you say that because I most discussions I have on the left about this is most people would say it wasn't Labour's fault it was a, uh, a global financial crash that's generally that's been historically my position on it so you're probably one of the first people I've spoken to on the left who said that it's kind of thrown me a little bit actually because I, I know that when um, in the 2015 leadership election uh, three of the candidates were kind of apologising for Labour's spending caused the crash and Jeremy Corbyn was the only one which is quite funny because Blairites get really angry when no one defends Blair's record and then Jeremy Corbyn was the only one who actually defended that I suppose may it might have been harder to explain to people that yes it yeah. kind of was our fault but for right wing politics not for left wing politics and the overall narrative was that Labour were just too red and that's yeah. why it happened if they tried to do that they probably could have worked the debate was between did they cause it didn't they cause it most people said yes some people say no maybe a third option a third way if I, uh, to use poor choices poor choice of words there say actually Labour fed into the economic system which made things far worse and they could have uh, protected yeah. themselves from it I think it's, you say that when people say oh were they overspent and that's what caused the crisis no no they over they spent yeah, that's a lot obviously of money ridiculous. In, in 2008 2010 and that was what saved the economy the Gordon mm. Brown stimulus package is what drug yes. is what took us out of the recession if anything we didn't spend enough because in 2010 they look out of power and their fiscal stimulus plan stopped or at mm. least changed from being a broad based stimulus plan into George Osborne who continued with quantitative easing but they didn't do it to expand the role of the state like doing like nationalizing northern rock and natwest like, like yeah. Gordon brown did but they used it to like throw a bunch of liquidity into the financial sector so that they could buy up a load of assets and inflate the price so working class people could no longer to get onto the asset market so the fact that people kept saying well the we need to reduce the deficit and I'm like the deficit's fine and the fact the broad framing is that labor spent too much and that's why it's bad when the opposite is completely true they were too right wing and then the crash happened and then gordon mm. brown saved the economy with fiscal stimulus and the, the conservatives ruined the economy by not continuing that and shrinking the state and reducing public spending, reducing growth. There's a great interview between the economist from the University of West of England, Joe Michel, speaking with the YouTube channel Unlearning Economics. It's on the Unlearning Economics Live channel, talking about the failures of austerity. And whilst most people predicted you would have like a Keynesian style recession because of the lack of spending from the Conservative government, what actually happened was we had like very slow growth because of what they did in the financial stimulus to the financial sector, keeping asset prices increased. But what they did to then counteract that is the re reason why there wasn't a proper recession, but it felt like there was one for so long is because of what they did with the labor market right they kept the labor market they, the labor market wasn't particularly loose it was a reasonably tight for a lot of time unemployment was quite low but bargaining power was so destroyed everything had become so casualized within the workforce the welfare state was so stripped back in supply side labor policy that there was no ability for workers to do any bargaining whatsoever even with the labor market not being particularly loose at the time anyway so it's a really great talk i reckon everybody goes and watches it mm. and it shows austerity was an explicit plan to shrink the state to put money into the hands of rich people which destroyed mm. our overall economy and our overall longevity of our economy it was a deliberate political choice and not one that was that happened by accident but they deliberately did it to squish workers wages in favor of the bourgeois it, is, it was literal mm. class war the worst class war this country's ever seen yeah and interestingly when it comes to welfare the shrink of the welfare state and, and benefits 
I think people don't really realize this, but those attacks came initially from Tony Blair. So I, I, I was researching this, actually, and uh, I think most people had a genuinely gen, gen, uh, a general positive view of welfare until Tony Blair started his benefit scrounger rhetoric, started actually attacking welfare recipients himself. So that's something that, to me, was... Uh, we get told that you must support Labour over the Tories in any situation, regardless of the Labour Party, because if you don't, you're being purist or you're being a, a cosplay working-class person, but actually you're middle-class, and it's the poorest that always hurts out with the Tory government. Tony Blair showed that that's not the case, that actually the, the poorest in society can also uh, be incredibly hurt by Labour government with priorities like that. And now we're seeing kind of a, a similar uh, welfare policy. I mean, um, oh, I forget who the Shadow Cabinet was again, a member, was just quite a while ago, who talked about sa making savings in welfare that could have went to more COVID payments. A lot of Blairites and centrists who say all that matters all that matters is that Labour win, and that is it, okay? Ditch your popular policies, ditch your left-wing ideology, ditch centre-left social democracy. It's all about winning. And what really annoys me is it's not, because I think politicians have a duty to have a reasonable debate, right? Because politics is about debate. It's about talking, it's about exchanging ideas, or it's supposed to be anyway. The idea that it's just about winning one election, getting into power, and that's it, is fundamentally wrong, in my opinion. I think it's so important, um, whether you're in government, whether you're in opposition, the things you talk about. And what Labour are doing now, because at the end of the day, one political party can try and drag the debate to the right. It only will truly move to the right when there's consensus politics. So when the so-called left-wing party or the Labour Party allow that debate to go to the right, you are doing damage in itself, even if you haven't had an election. I think it's so important. So when Labour talk about stealing, essentially stealing um, trickle-down economics, you are at, you are participating in this narrative and you're participating in the rightward shift in politics, even if you're not in government. And it's really dangerous. And the fallout from that is Labour wins the next election, okay? They, they fail on their own terms because they're too right-wing. And what happens? The debate will go even further to the right. In fact, just Labour winning on this uh, platform, the Conservatives, I mean, they're not going to go left, of course not. They're just going to go further to the right because they're going to think, well, we want to be in power. Obviously, if we're going to start saying the exact same thing as the Labour Party, I don't think people are going to vote for us. We need to move more right-wing and new message. Generally, that means far more trumped-up culture war rhetoric, which is just dangerous for everyone. And I think it annoys me that these Labour politicians, they pretend they're so grown up, so sensible, so smart, yet they can't seem to look past their fucking own nose and think, maybe me contributing to this debate, this rightward shift in the debate, is really bad for long-term politics. They don't seem to see that, and they don't seem to get them when we say, you know, people make fun that all oh, Jeremy Corbyn lost but won the debate. All right, yeah, it matters that he didn't win an election, but it was incredibly important that he widened the debate because we had Boris Johnson, who is much of a right-wing prick he is, in terms of even climate change... An economic policy is to the left of the current Labour Party. That was only because we had a Labour Party that actually had a set of books in them. Yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. The Overton window shifting is is the absolute death knell for left-wing politics in this country. It's really sad to see like left-wing policy will potentially be buried for a decade, maybe two. And the kind of populist rush that will kind of take hold instead of that will be will be pretty sad to see. The most incredibly frustrating part is that I feel like if any time, obviously, even outside of what's happened in rhetorically with the Conservative Party and where you can attack them, the worst part of this is that I feel like if there was ever a time to say, okay, we have a gigantic lead in the polls, we can now be less cautious with our, with our policy. Because I think that the hatred of the Conservative Party is so great that we could propose a couple of things people disagreed with and they still wouldn't would vote for us over the Conservative Party. They could propose a little bit more taxation. They could propose a little bit more kind of public spending, a new works program, other kinds of social democratic. Everyone hates the Conservatives. There's, like, there's so many people just voting for any option other than the Tories at the moment, which is what Labour basically are. No one wants Labour. No one's happy about Keir Starmer. His, his ratings are in the mm. tank, right? When they try to poll people on which... Which Reeves is polling as well. Yeah, he's like 65% said don't know. No one's enthusiastic about Labour. But even with the dire platform they're putting forward to people, people are still saying, well, I can't vote Tory because they've you know, they've screwed my pension over, they've screwed my mortgage over, whatever it is, so I have mm. to vote for somebody else. Now is the time where you can, you can you have the wiggle room to make policy that's good. You don't have to capitulate on, on policy anymore now that the votes have already been won. People mm. have already moved across the aisle when being polled. Like they said, I voted Tory, but now I have to vote Labour to get the Tories out. People have moved over already. I don't think there is much policy that we want to see. But it would be so bad that anybody who in the polling is saying, well, actually, I was going to vote Labour, but they've looked too radical lefty, so I have to vote for the Tories. I don't think that's the case. Mm. No, I agree. And uh, when you have genuine conversations with everyday people and you talk about, we need more funding on our NHS, our NHS is screwed. We need more funding. And some people might say, well, we've got no money. 
every time I say, yeah, but I think we should probably tax the rich more corporations. Like, yeah, they should. We absolutely should do that. It's not an unpopular policy. They have massive leads. They're not going to fail on this. And it's, it's just really frustrating because they, what I find really sus, especially people on Twitter who have social Democrat in their profile. Now, I like social democracy. I mean, most of us on the left, most of us socialists, because the actual so-called quote unquote social democrats completely vacated the area. So it's up to us lefties arguing for social democracy rather than the stuff we wanted, well, which is socialism. Like, I mean, I've barely talked about socialism. I, I only talk about social democracy, right? But those who call themselves social democrats don't seem to want social democracy. So right now we're in a position where the moderate Labour Party, who would call themselves social democrats, are in a position where they can now start arguing for pretty good social democracy positions with a huge lead, and they don't. And it just makes me think that we don't really have a social democratic movement in this country. We either have neoliberalism or a very, very small amount of socialists like us, and that's kind of it. I don't think that these are social democrats who who have abandoned social democracy. I think they're so people who call themselves social democrats who don't know what social democracy is and grew up in a post blair world right where they thought that the third way mm. was social democracy and they don't quite they don't understand the difference between keynesianism and monetarism or neoclassical economics they don't understand any of these things they don't understand basic macroeconomics they just think when mm. the state does welfare is social democracy which is such a yeah. ludicrous under that wrong definition you could call blair a social democrat he did increase welfare spending right we had tax credits and all that mm. kind of malarkey sure start etc etc but did he changed the fundamental nature of the market base of the economy no did he make things yeah. more yeah. did he increase state ownership within the economy. In fact, he did the reverse. More things got privatised than were state-owned until Brown became Prime Minister. The internal market logic of neoliberalism was never undermined by the Blair administration at any point in the decade of it that he was in power. Yeah. There's just no metric by which you could call him a social democrat. Yeah. And that's the thing. I remember even John McTernan, right? <laughs> it was so funny. He was trying to argue, no, um, Blair wasn't neoliberal because he introduced the minimum wage. It's like, it's like one policy. It, look, I think do social democrats or people call themselves social democrats do they think it's social democracy because we have a government and that or that we because we have a welfare state even though it's not fit for purpose that's it because that's not social democracy you can have a state and i think these people also think that capitalism is without a state and it's a bit more complicated than that the state is very good at enforcing capitalism so that's what we talk about neoliberalism it's got the word neo before it because liberalism was more about a, a very small state right whereas neoliberalism is about a big state that reinforces capitalism right yes so privatization is a really good one it's like or getting uh, corporations to bed with government right it, it's actually actively using the state private gains or a wealthy elite private gains and these same people also think that um, blair and clement attlee are the same because i guess look at uh, clement attlee as a social democratic government their rights call themselves social democratic and the amount of conversations i've had is like oh my god you guys would um you hate blair but you you, you hate clement attlee as well i remember matt ford talking about how jeremy corbyn and the left was a hard left clique it was a clique and clement attlee and nye bevan would be turning in their groves at what corbyn did to the party it was like are you for real in 1945 clement attlee nationalized like 25 to 30 percent of the economy they built the nhs the welfare state millions of council houses right they would look at tony blair and fucking turn their graves wait you want to privatize our nhs Did you want to dismantle our welfare communist. state barely build any houses or use housing association program not proper good council houses you've adopted thatcherism but jeremy corbyn is nothing like, like mainstream labor like sure his foreign policy was not mainstream labor we get that but his core economic policy was and that just brings you back to those that call themselves social democrats they just don't understand what it is so we yeah. don't even have a social democratic movement in this country which is which is a, a huge big vacuum of politics and now we've stuffed it full of neoliberalism because now we've chucked out the guy who wanted to end or at least combat neoliberalism we've chucked him out and we've got a big vacuum of just red and blue neoliberalism and that's kind of it for british politics if you enjoyed this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. It does help out the channel and the algorithm. And if you click the bell notification icon, it will let you know when I go live and when I upload videos. If you'd like to follow me on social media, my handle is at NoJusticeMTG, and that is Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, Instagram, Twitch, and YouTube. If you want to support my channel in a more financial manner, you can do so by becoming a member for just 99p, by super chatting, or by supporting me on Patreon, with the link is in the description of this video. And hopefully I'll catch you on the next segment.